Hi guys, thanks for joining me for this short tutorial on um, gratitude meditation practice. I'm not an expert and I wouldn't say that I have a massive commercial knowledge of meditation or mindfulness. Um, I don't have any qualifications in terms of any of those things. However, it has been an interest of mine for many, many years. And I've had some really good experiences traveling to Plum Village in France to Thich Nhat Hang's uh, monastery and spending some time with the, the monks there. So I guess what I'm sharing with you guys is just some of my ideas more than anything. I think the first thing to sort of mention is that uh, just my take on meditation is that people have over time complicated it, made it out to be more, more I don't want to say difficult because it can be difficult, but more complicated than actually what it is. So the first part of this video I'm just going to quickly explain how I think uh, meditation works or how it can work and then particularly how uh, gratitude meditation practice can work and hopefully um, add something and improve your life. So the first thing is just to sort of recognize that time, technically time doesn't exist, it's a concept. So the past we can't really go back to, we can remember and we use time to make sense of things. The future is again a projection of what we believe is going to happen, uh, but the only place we can actually act and be in is the present. And there's many different books and different theories and different um, concepts of how to be, to live present, to live in the moment. And it's important not to disregard any, I think, opinion or thought, because for different times of different people's lives, it's important to understand what is optimal for you and what works for you. When it comes to actually the body-mind connection, if we're thinking about something we've got to do in the future, so we're thinking forwards, um, we're not really present. And likewise, if we're thinking about something that's happened yesterday or even a few years ago, or maybe when we were younger, um, our mind then goes back and once again, we're not present and we lose an awareness. Um, and you're all probably familiar with either walking somewhere or driving somewhere and f not being aware of actually the process or the drive to work or somewhere because you were thinking so much about something else. Maybe a song came on the radio or maybe you were planning your day. Um, and that is how easily our attention can be thrown to the future or the past. Now the problem with that is if we do that a lot, we don't spend enough time in the present and we can find that a lot of things become erratic. So things like your breathing, you can feel tense, you can get more anxious, you can feel depressed and worried and all these things can spiral out of control. So part of the practice that we're going to do today is about first of all slowing down and bringing our attention back to the present moment. And then the second part is actually building up what you could call almost like a gratitude bank. So first and foremost, um, I've, I've run out a couple of steps, just things to try. Um, the first step is uh, protect a specific amount of time to be alone or in a quiet place and make sure you have space to sit, lie down, or somewhere that you can relax and feel comfortable. This is quite important because if you've got distractions, so you've got kids running around or the TV's on or noises, it's quite difficult to observe yourself in those conditions. Um, the time frame isn't that important, so if you've got five minutes, brilliant. If you've got two minutes, brilliant. Um, you can more or less work, make this work um, with very limited time. But I would say the first step is just protecting a little bit of time to do it. So I find early in the morning is a nice time um, when everything's quiet and you can find somewhere just to relax. The second step is before we actually begin, 
we're going to allow two minutes to connect to our breathing and bring our attention back to our body. Um, it, a lot of the stuff I'm going to say sounds really, I don't want to say stupid because it's not stupid, but it sounds really simple, but people don't do it. So this is the first kind of stage. Um, and what we do is we come out with a very simple mantra, which is, as you breathe in, you say to yourself, you can either say it out loud or say it in your mind, breathing in, I know I'm breathing in. Breathing out, I know I'm breathing out. Now I know that sounds really simple, but very often we're not even aware of our breathing. So what we're doing is we're making the place quiet, um, we're eliminating all the distractions, and we're just paying close attention to our breathing. We're not trying to control it, but as you breathe in, you're aware and you know that you're breathing in. As I breathe out, I know I'm breathing out. So we just do that for two minutes or so, and we observe our body, we have a little feel around for any tension, and we just bring all our attention back to that breathing. So once we've got that, we can then move to step three. So step three involves having, you don't have to have uh, beads. So if you've got meditation beads, brilliant. Or sometimes I like to use stones. So if you've got any crystals or stones in your hands, you can use those too. And basically this is where we're gonna to start to think about gratitude. Um, and what I mean by gratitude is all the things that we can be grateful for. And sometimes, this is easy to do, and at other times it's very difficult. And like anything, this is a practice. So when people turn around and say, oh, I wish I was more positive, the big question really is, well, what, what are we doing in order to be more positive? What are we doing in order to think more about, you know, things that will make us feel better? And I do find that it's a bit um, like watering seeds. It takes a bit of time to cultivate a reaction or a response. And at the first stage, at this stage, we, we have more influence than we do uh, than control. I'm a sort of believer that you can't really control our thoughts and our feelings, but we can influence them over time by the way that we respond to the feelings and thoughts. So part of this um, gratitude meditation is understanding that almost everyone in the world has something to be grateful for and obviously it's, it can be very difficult if you're going through a rough time because our focus and attention tends to go towards the negative experiences that we're having and that's where we tend to get wrapped up but what I find is if we can just separate um, a little bit of time each day just to think about the things that we are grateful for it could be the fact that we can breathe in and out it could be the friends and family we've got it could be having a job, it could be having a roof over our head, it could be having fresh water out of a tap, it could be a conversation we've had with a close friend. So the idea of the gratitude meditation is we spend a little bit of time going through and specifically drawing out different things that we feel we can be grateful for. Now when we do this there's no forced expectation or pressure and if you don't feel like you can think of anything, you don't have to suddenly think of something. If during the meditation your mind wanders and you start thinking about something else, that's fine. Okay, it's a practice. But as you get better at this, what you'll find is that your thoughts become clearer and your speed of accessing things to be grateful for will probably increase as well. So what I tend to do is have a beaded um, meditation, sort of kind of necklace bracelet thing. And what I will do is, mine's got a little bit of slack in it. So I will start at one place uh, in the center and then I'll hold one of the beads in my finger and thumb and that will be my thought. So I'll start by doing two minutes of meditation. So if you want to join along with me now, you can do, uh, just to see how this works as a practice. So the first thing I'm going to do is get myself comfortable, make sure I'm sitting tall, comfortable. I want to be comfortable for the next four or five minutes at least. Okay, So make sure if you're sitting, lying, wherever you are positioned, you feel comfortable with that position itself. 
So as I breathe in, I know I'm breathing in. As I breathe out, I know I'm breathing out. As I take a deep breath in, I know I'm taking a deep breath in. As I breathe out, I know I'm taking a breath out. As I breathe in, I feel my body relax and I know I'm relaxing. As I breathe out, I allow all the tension to leave my body. As I breathe in, I recognize and know I'm breathing in. As I breathe out, I recognize and know I'm breathing out. So I've done that for about a minute. And what I like to do is maybe do that in your mind or maybe say it out loud, either is fine, and do it for about two minutes. Or have a settling effect. Sometimes I like to think of it as a jam jar full of mud or um, debris, you're shooking it around and we tend to be moving around a lot in life and what we're doing is we're allowing that all that sort of sediment and all that mud to clear and just settle to the bottom by being still. So one of the advantages of sitting in a quiet room is we can observe stillness a bit more, absorb it a bit more and allow our thoughts to settle. So I'm going to go to my, uh, my beaded bracelet now or necklace. And I'm going to start to go through the things that I'm grateful for. So once again, this is subjective. It, it can be anything. There doesn't have to be an order. There doesn't have to be um, a, a big meaning in it. It's just recognising things. So the first thing, I'm really grateful for all my friends and family that I have, that have cared for me my whole life. I'll just think a little bit about that. I'm grateful for my physical body, for what it's done for me over the last 870 years, because I'm a vampire. I'm grateful for the job I have, working as a physiotherapist, and the people that I meet. I'm grateful for my mother and father, who showed me a lot of love, gave me a lot of support when I was growing up. Grateful for my wife and child, for their continuing support and acceptance of me and my weird ways. I'm grateful for the good friends I've uh, acquired over the last 20 years that are not always there but I can feel their support there. I'm grateful for the sun when it shines it makes me feel that everything's the way it's meant to be. Grateful for my dad, for all the hard work he did coming over from Jamaica, coming from a, a strained family, and all the hard work and efforts he gave to in order a good life for his children. I'm grateful for the fact I've got a car and I can drive to and from work and more or less where I want to go. I'm grateful for the teachers in my life that have recognised potential in me and encouraged me and pushed me to develop what I have. I'm grateful for all the food that I have. Grateful for 
the income I have from my job that allows me to buy food and keep a roof over my head, which keeps me safe. I'm grateful for all the people that if I'm out and about and I see will look and smile. I'm grateful for all the people that when I see them out and about they maybe ignore me or they're lost in thought or they're angry or they scowl at me because it teaches me about myself and makes me more mindful about trying to be better at acknowledging people and being a friendly face. I'm grateful for the kind of twists and turns and the kinks that life has thrown me. Some of the some of the toughest things that I've had to deal with have probably shaped my perception, made me stronger, made me appreciate what I do have. appreciate the uh, mornings I have by myself sometimes getting up early and seeing the sunrise. Appreciate the stars at night when I look up at them. Sometimes it makes me feel really insignificant but at the same time it makes me feel like there is a bigger purpose and plan. Um, I could pretty much go on and on and on like this, guys. Um, so what I would say initially with this is to probably a lot a certain amount of time. So begin maybe, I mean, I'll probably waffle there for about I don't know, seven or eight minutes. But if you start off and you, you, you could literally sit up in bed, sit on the edge of your bed, take a couple of deep breaths, settle yourself, and then just do five things or 10 things, or just do it for two minutes. And I think even if you're feeling quite low or if you're feeling down, like I said, it's like watering seeds. It doesn't necessarily instantaneously make you feel better. But I think what we're doing is we're learning to draw our attention or redirect our attention slowly to a, a state of appreciation. I think it was Michael J, J. Fox had a brilliant quote, which was, happiness happens proportional to acceptance and inversely proportional to expectation and I, I time and time and time again find myself chasing things to either stimulate myself make myself feel better make myself feel happier make myself feel exhilarated um, and sometimes what I need to do the most is just sit down slow down and be thankful and sometimes it's difficult sometimes it's hard to do that sometimes I'm angry or I'm upset or I feel low, and I almost want to feel in that place. But this is where a bit of mindful gratitude, even if it's two or three minutes or five minutes worth, goes a long way. I like to think of it as mental training. So physically we know that if we learn to pick up an object in a certain way, so keeping our back straight and using our legs, over time that practice develops strength and it's the same thing with these practices mentally. It's important to think about this as a mental practice. And like I said from the beginning, if you want to be a more positive person or see the world differently, what practice are you doing that enables you to do that? I know for a lot of people this might make them feel uncomfortable or it might make them feel different, but it's exactly the same physically when you're doing a new exercise. When you first do it, what's wrong? or what's right feels wrong when you're wrong. So doing something new or different can feel unfamiliar, it can, it can feel counterintuitive, but it's kind of what we need to do in order to, to grow. So I hope you guys find some utility in that and that's useful for you. Um, let me know how you get on with it. I would probably start off by saying maybe just three times a week, keep it simple and easy, maybe just for five minutes. Um, like I say, if you have a meditation, uh, 
beaded bracelet, that seems to help me quite a lot, just fixing on one idea at a time and then going through. Um, but the more you do it, the easier you'll find it to find gratitude. And then the skill becomes, or the, I'm not sure to call it skill, the willpower comes doing this when you don't feel like doing it is a hard thing, but, but worth its weight. So thank you guys. Take care of yourselves and I shall catch up with you soon.